Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hello again from Studio 3B here at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, Canfield, Ohio. Uh, this is Steve Stack, and I am with a very special friend, uh, my friend, Baird Brothers friend, Northeast Ohio's friend, and that would be Mr. Mark Munch Bishop. And we are really excited to have Munch. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have some conversations. So Munch, how are you doing, bud? You know, I am superb. Thank you so much. And when I come out to Canfield, the Baird Brothers, I'm even doing better, man, because it's just, a, I mean, it's comfortable. It's family. And you know what's cool, too? We haven't even gotten rolling yet. I love pulling in and seeing, and again, you know, hey, kudos to them, but I love seeing a lineup of seven or eight different trucks from other lumber companies <laughs> coming here to get their goods. I mean, this is the hub, baby. This is it. And it's like I say, not just nationally, but internationally craved products. And I get to hang out here with you, man. Part of the family of Bear Brothers. You, you, you know it, man. We, we, we think of you as family and, and, uh, we, we, we just love having you down Thanks, here. Man, every, 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 every time, every time you're down here, we have great conversation. Um, and, and it's, it's, uh, I'm going to say it. It's no BS. It's straight off the cuff. Thanks, man. Right? I appreciate that. I feel the same way. And thank you, too, because you gave me a new way to get here going through Lord's <laughs> Town. I don't mind going out through the country looking at the ball diamonds, but it breaks my heart because I know Scott's a huge baseball fan, softball fan. It breaks my heart in the middle of January driving by the ball diamonds knowing we can't do a dang thing about it because you know what? I always have a baseball mitt in the truck of my car. You know that. Yeah, yeah you've always. Told, you've told me that before. You've told me that before. Yeah. What's better than that? Stopping That's on a little league, little league dirt field, right? Right, right. right? And, you know, Does that bring back memories? Occasionally, you know, I'll get grilled by somebody on the air baseball, come up. One of the things I always say, do you know where your baseball mitt is? And when people say, no, I got to hang up on them. You should at least know where it is. You know what I mean? That's I American, where, man. I know where mine's at. Yeah, just so you know. Come. First one. Yeah. Right? What? <laughs> I have, I have. Wait a minute. I have, I was a bat boy, right? Okay, I come have, on. I have an old wool matching uniform for the team that I bat boyed from. Wool. wool. Could you imagine that? It's like 90 degrees. Gray wool. Gray wool, blue pinstripes, down the legs, down the sleeves. It didn't matter if you were hot. You just sweated and you kept bat going. Boy, bat boy letters sewn on the back. Really? My mom saved it all these years. See, you know what? You got to <laughs> save stuff like that. I've got one played for a team. It was called, the company was Solon Bard Papers. It was a printing company. Yeah. And the same thing, it's wool, you're saying, I caught with the gear on <laughs> and had that thing. But you know what? Right? You never once thought twice about it because you got to play a game you loved. Exactly, exactly. Some of the best times. Childhoods should be that fun. Amen. Right? Yeah. And so maybe we should pass it on to the owners, Major League Baseball, and the players right now. Just sit down. We don't care. It's billionaires against billionaires, you know? Just settle what you need to do. We want to watch baseball. And when those guys, the major leaguers, are having fun, they're winning. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Look at the guys laughing. Look at the guys fighting. Oh, there's an intensity involved. And there is a bottom line because there's two columns. One on the left with a W, one on the right with an L, okay? And you want most of your games to go on the W side. But you, know, you see the guys, they're smiling and laughing. It's interesting. Some of the old school guys don't like that. Remember the Indians had a second baseman, Brandon Phillips? Yeah. And he didn't get along with the manager, Eric Wedge, because Wedge said, you're not supposed to be having fun out there. Phillips said, pardon me, I'm a black kid from the ghetto. I'm making millions of dollars. I'm having fun. They traded him to Cincinnati. He was only an all-star six years in a row, and the Indians didn't have a second baseman. Have fun. But you know what else, though? When I come here, whether it's guys making doll rods, whether somebody putting together pieces for a stairwell, whether somebody just planting some wood. People here have fun too with what they're doing. They're serious because they know that the jobs they made need to be perfection because you don't want a piece of wood with you know a, a, a quarter inch short or something like that, but they enjoy what you're doing 
If you enjoy what you're doing, it comes off that way. You know that, Steve? Oh, that, that's it. And, and, and your product, whether it be in the wind column or whether it be the quality of the product you're producing, it's reflective of that mentality. Right, right. You know, see, that's something else I love about Baird Brothers. People take ownership. Now, they don't take advantage of that, but they take ownership. It's as if everybody here, from somebody that's sweeping up some sawdust after something is done, to Steve or Scott up in his office, Everyone takes ownership. Somebody in the sales room. I had a listener pop in the other day. Actually, the infamous Mr. Gullible from Stowe. Yeah. He's the guy that always sends his calls with like an I, 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 you know. And, <laughs> and he came in, he goes, I felt like I'd been in that showroom 50 times. Walked in and said, hey, how are you doing? He, he got some, uh, some tools that he wanted to do some yeah. uh, carving with. And, and that's what it is. People take ownership and they do it in a good way. They, you know what that means? Pride. Isn't that something, Steve? No, it is. It, it's so much it, pride. It, it, it's pride, and, and, and it, it's just not the approach to your job. It's when we go home at night to our respective families, and it's the approach that you take with them also. It, and it's everything. It all ties in together. Yeah. It's, hey, life's too short. Amen, brother. Right? Yeah, I know that for a fact. <laughs> with, with, with that said, okay, we're, we're jumping out to the Baird Brothers audience all around the country. And uh, if you're from Northeast Ohio, everybody knows who Mark Munch Bishop is. Well, thank if, you. If, 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 if it involves in sports way. and radio. I don't, any, I don't know anyone hey, money. I want you to know that. <laughs> you've, you've, already, you've, already, the bank. you've already set that bar high, friend. <laughs> Thanks. But, but, you know, in, in all seriousness, um, I know, I know a ton of your background, a lot of people listening do, a lot of people don't. Give us, give us a short bio of where, where Munch is from, uh, how, he, how he came up, up through the ranks, and, and what, what you've kept yourself busy at for the last 43 years? Yeah, for, it would be 44 years, August 15th yeah. in the business. So how did it happen? Okay, you know, it, it was really a lot of divine intervention in my life, okay? I'm an inner city Cleveland kid from 53rd and Ham Avenue in Slavic Village. <laughs> then we moved to the Lee Harvard area. I thought I was moving to like a gated community in Gates Mills or so that, you know? <laughs> and uh, then was there and then moved out to Solon for high school. Yeah. So I went to, and I've got to say it that way, the Ohio State University for undergrad. I was going to grad school. Believe it or not, my major was sociology, criminology because I was going to go to law school. So I was at Capital Law School, and they were saying, why not Ohio State? And it was like, you know, the, t the counselors even told me, they said, you know what? You've been here for your undergrad, for your master's. Go to a different college for your, you know, for your law school, just to you know, get a little bit more. And Capital had a great law school in Columbus, so I was in Capital Law School, finished up my second year, and there was a relatively new radio station in Columbus, QFM 96. And it was a sister, it's a rock station, a sister station of W610 uh, WTVN. Every city has your, you know, WTM 1100, like right. in Cleveland. Right. I mean, you know, Youngstown has, you know, our, our talk, talk AMs. And you can go all across the country. Cincinnati has WLW, but you could probably even get up here at 700, you know, with a booming signal, the yeah. big, big talk AM station. So QFM came around. I'm going to Capital Law School, and which was one of the most difficult things I've ever done. I was working my way through law school. So there was a famous deli in downtown Columbus for years called Bernie's Bagels and Deli. So I was managing the deli. So my classes in the afternoon, I'd open the deli 6 a.m. for breakfast and I managed them, shush, head off to class. If I had classes in the morning, my schedule was opposite. Well, these radio stations happen to be in a building right across the street. And the program director, the general manager, a couple of other people, sales manager, a couple of the air talent, they'd come in three, four days a week, get a corned beef in, sandwich. In, into the restaurant. Into the Bernie's Bagel. Yeah. Get, get a corned beef sandwich, have, have a beer with it, you know, and chit chat. And, you know, being a manager, being very conscious, payroll, you know, if it was kind of slow, I'd, I'd send a bartender home. I could put an order in for a corned beef sandwich, come on, and, and draw a beer, no problem. <laughs> And we started talking to him, and out of the clear blue sky, the program director says to me, he goes, you know what? You know a lot of sports. 
And I said, you know, yeah, if it wasn't going to law school, I always wanted to be a sports announcer. And actually had some broadcast journalism courses as, um, you know, um, you know, you need to get eight more hours and you get all your... Some of your uh, electives. Yeah, electives, yeah, you have <laughs> yeah. all your requirements done. Okay, yeah. I'll take a couple of those. And he goes, you know, I want a sports guy for the new rock station. Because you're in Columbus, and what rules Columbus? Ohio yeah. State. Yeah, definitely. I mean, people will want to talk Ohio State football in the middle of <clears> March. <throat> you know, the season starts when? Yeah. In the yeah. So he goes, how'd you like to make a few eggs? I said, I don't really have time for that. He goes, oh, we'll work around it. We'll work around it, you know? I'd like you to do a couple reports in the morning. What time are you in here, this and that? You could do it on the phone if you want. So he goes, well, we could, we could swing a 6.10 and a 7.10 report in the morning. And we could just replay one of those at 8.10. I said, okay, now, picture this. This is 1979. You weren't even born yet, were you? <laughs> I, was, I, I, was, I was right behind you. I started, okay. I started college in 79. And <laughs> so I said, well, what's it going to be? They go, for two reports a morning? We're thinking 70 bucks a week. Whew. Wait a second. <clears throat> That's a couple tanks of gas, okay? And, and back then, you know, you know, what kind of food were you eating? Uh, yeah. Macaroni and cheese <laughs> and, and, and different, different ways. And maybe some uh, Chef Boyardee in a can. I said, you know what? Let me try it. Because one thing I want is I want you to talk sports. Not like, and last night the Indians upended the White Sox. She goes, no, no, no. I want you to talk sports like you're talking to me across the bar, like you're talking to yeah. us, like we're sitting down, or like yep. when I talk to Scott, you know, something of that right. nature. So I said, I'll try and do it. <clears throat> Went, did a couple dry runs, goes, you're hired. I go, okay, I figured I'd do it for a few months, make a few extra bucks. Well, then the guy in the afternoon, and we all know the name Dan Patrick, mm -hmm. internationally you know, the there sportscaster. You go. It was his younger brother, Dan, by the way, a little scoop for you here with, with the Baird Brothers podcast, okay? Dan's real name is Pew, P-U-G-H, from Mason, Ohio, before Mason became a booming suburb of Cincinnati. And all, they all went to the University of Dayton. So Bill, they had a little bit of sport, knew his brother was off to ESPN, said, you know what, I want that guy at my show in the afternoon. So it's like, okay, at the time you wanted me, you wanted me like at 5'10", I was always free. So he told the owner of the deli, hey, if he could walk across the street, you know, I mean, we'll give the deli a plug. You know what I mean? It, well, yeah, fine, fine. Yeah. Commercial. So I started doing an afternoon drive. And are you ready for this? Don't fall out of your seat. For an extra 30 bucks a week, baby. I was up to a hundo a week for, for that. And I was living large. And all of a sudden, it kept going, it kept going, it kept going. People would, you know, morning shows would change and quit. And after doing it for about a year, and I'd finish up my second year of law school, they said to me, go, we hate to do this to you. And I'm thinking, okay, here it comes. Yeah. We're not going to use you anymore. We know you're in law school. We'd like to add you full time. And I started thinking, you know what? This is what I, I'm really enjoying myself. And I see people enjoying themselves. And I see people, I mean, they're, they're putting in work, but it's not really work. Let me go talk to somebody. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject, and you're still enjoying yourself. I've never worked a day in my life. Yeah. Never. Right. And I get up at 3.30. Next week, I'll, I'll be doing, a, you know, 6, 10 in the mornings. Or, I'm sorry, 1,100 in the mornings. And since that show starts at 5, I'm up at about 3 for that. Yeah. you got to remember, for a couple of years over at ESPN, I was starting at 4.30. So my wake-up call was at 2.45. That's not right. <laughs> Think about that. That's not right to be getting up at 2.45 in the morning. But I still haven't worked a day in my life. The, the most interesting thing is, talking to my, went to my law school counselor. He goes, you know, you're, just, you're finishing up your hardest year. And I said, I know. I said, but you know what? I can always come back. And he was one of these scholarly types of corduroy sports coat, patches on, his, on, on the elbows, you know. And looked at me and actually put his hand, tapped it in the back. He goes, you know what? You won't be back. That's not a bad thing. He goes, yeah. You'll have a good career, and it's been there ever since. Right. Anything from doing, you know, National Fox, <laughs> National ESPN, you know, calling games on down the line. It's, uh, you know, kind of gone this way because when I say I phased out a little bit, I'm only going to do about 300 shows this year. Okay. So. 
<laughs> yeah, and 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 in the same in in the same time frame, uh, you live out there on the west side of Cleveland, and uh, how about your family? Okay, tell us about your family. Family is superb. Okay, my my wife my wife is my hero. I don't mind getting a little emotional. She's a breast cancer survivor, yep. and she keeps me in line. <laughs> how she's put up with me, I don't know. Uh, son, it's uh, twenty eight. He program. Tell me, how, this is in pride. He's a physics major, played football, high school, and college. You don't see too many physics majors, yeah. okay? He programs microscopes from anything for hospitals. In fact, he's got one of those space suits for COVID's research. Right. He will program microscopes for like Bureau of Criminal Investigation in the state of Ohio. Actually, was just down uh, programming microscopes for the uh, Stark County Sheriff's Department for you know uh, products like that. So that's what he does. My 26-year-old daughter, and she said to me the other day, all excited, she goes, Daddy, everybody will like this, I'm going to be the first woman on the cover of Forbes. She's in investments in Manhattan and loves New York City. Wow. And just, you know, it's either, for, either plus or, or, or minus. And she just loves it, loves the hustle and bustle, loves what she does. My 24-year-old daughter is in global outsourcing for Cardinal Health. So she sends surgical supplies and supplies all over the country. And youngest son just finished up college, thank golly. Okay, after four <laughs> going through, he will be a, a finance and accounting major. And it's interesting you ask because he's got an uh, interview coming up with Key Bank. There you go. In Cleveland. So he'll Based graduate. Based downtown? He'll, yeah, he'll graduate in the fall. Well, so good. there you have it. You got well, me, I'm, I, I play with the dog most of the time. So, so, it's, so it's obvious the kids were paying attention to mom and dad because you don't have any underachievers. No, I hope it doesn't seem that way, you know? It seems like, like the oldest says, he's always grinding, you know? That's always it. grinding. Now, they do have her looks and brains, and they have my endurance. Uh -huh. You know, I, I, go back to the, oof, I go back to the old Woody Hayes school of thought that it's obvious, and everybody that met me here today, I'm not the smartest guy around, okay? But no one's ever outworked me, and that's just the way you go. A lot to be said for that, buddy. Yeah, that's the way. And that, that, that comes from my mental shortcomings, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so there you go. In a nutshell, that's that. that well, I, that, I tell you what, that was that. Uh, that was a big nutshell because you've you've uh, you've experienced so much, and and with your with your radio career, uh, a celebrated career, uh, we became acquaintances uh, three years, four years. Yeah, you know, actually, twenty seventeen is when my show was sitting when I was doing yeah. 1390 in Youngstown, yeah. along with Akron, Canton, Cleveland, <clears throat> Mansfield, Ashland. And it was very cool to be, you know, on a daily basis around uh, really the top third of the state. So four or five years ago, uh, we became acquaintance. Shortly after that, uh, uh, a natural process, we became friends. And, and uh, I can still remember the day that, that you came in with a mutual friend of ours, Larry Ward. God bless him, man. We miss right? Larry. You know right? uh, Larry is retired. You know what? He is so retired, it takes me two weeks to get a phone call back from him. <laughs> and he's like, he, I, I think he's enjoying it. Yeah, he goes, there's no business anymore, I, right? So I'll get to you when I get to you. <laughs> you think those are some spoiled grandkids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's just, that's Larry. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you came in. We had a great conversation with Larry, uh, Scott Baird, yourself, me, and and uh, and, and I and I love sharing this story. Uh, we went for what we call the nickel tour, right? And I've I've done it hundreds of times with uh, prospective customers, vendors, mm -hmm. uh, media partners, and and I, I we got we got done with the tour that day, and you carried a legal. Uh, yellow legal pad along with you. We got done with the tour and never before had I seen nor have I seen since you had two and a half, three pages of notes. We were talking and walking and you were taking dictation down. There's little things you see <laughs> that may be inconspicuous, okay? But it's like, wait a minute, that's why this place is great. And that's why, you know, seeing somebody <clears throat> rubbing their hand over the, the uh, Dalrod Darrell, right? Yeah, <laughs> Dalrod Darrell, yep. Making the Dalrods. I mean, <laughs> people like that, the, the pride people put into it, just the little things noticing around that uh, it was immaculate. 
Like I joke, you know what? If we're going to have lunch, just dump it on the floor. I can eat it off the floor because the floor is clean. Yeah, you know, and that's and, and thank you. No, no, and thank thank you uh, for for giving those recognitions. Uh, we do Baird's the family. Uh, they completely appreciate their work staff, and yeah, and they are family, right? Exactly, exactly, and and they're treated, you know, they're treated that way. Uh, we all have ups and downs, and and the family is always there to to help you on, get you back up when you're down, and and uh, and and you know what? From an ownership standpoint, they recognize it. It comes back to them tenfold. Yeah. Right? Because people take pride, they take care, right. they have respect. And do you know what else is cool too? There is longevity. Every time I come here, I meet somebody else just walking around and they've been here for decades working. Why would I be anywhere else? They that's, take care of me. That's true. Take care that's, of them. That's, yeah. that's very true. Um, so we have, we have uh, this meeting, this nickel tour, and. Well, I got the 50 cent tour, I want to tell you. That. <laughs> and, and, it might have been a dime. I don't know if it was 50. But <laughs> we, we began a relationship. Take us through that. Well, the, the bottom line is, is that he said, you know, we'd like you to you know, represent Baird Brothers, not just to the, you know, the fans. They're not just listeners. They're, more, they're, they're my family, too. Because yeah. everybody that listens, whether they're my, I'm their fan. Because without them, we couldn't be doing this. So it's like, you know, let's, let's give this a whirl. Let's give this a go. So we pretty much, if you would carve out the top third of the state, we expanded and we were everywhere, whether it be Lorain County, whether it be Trumbull County, heck, whether or not people over at uh, uh, the Times Square in Kinsman who make, by the way, yep. best cream pies around, you yep, know that. Yep, yep, oh, yep. I haven't had a cream pie either. For great, <laughs> great little community. Yeah, and everywhere, I mean, Mansfield Ashland, I think I shot you. I had, you know, a family member, Dan from Ashland. I have no idea what his last name is, but I get to know people, and you get to know about him. So shoot me a picture saying, dude, there's a Baird Brother truck at Ashland today, <laughs> and, and people would see it, and there, there was a buzz, and, and, you know, there already was one. But it seemed like we got to another segment uh, of, of folks that enjoy not just woodwork, woodworking themselves, you know, putting up some you know, chair rail or something like that, but to actual home builders, to, you know, people doing bigger jobs on down the line, and, the, and they came, and especially to, now, the websites are great, but you don't, you know what that's like? Every time there's, I have to say Guardians now, right? Mm -hmm. A home series? You don't have to on my account, okay. but. Well, since I'm going to be doing our pregame <laughs> show, I better start. And everybody's looking for a nickname. Actually, the best nickname I've seen so far is from Terry Pluto. He called them G-Men. Yeah. So right now, that's the I mean, I've heard Gardos. I've heard, oh, no, this thing. Yeah. G-Men seem to make it. But, um, you know, so we're, we're looking at things and, and looking at that segment of the population. But all of a sudden, it's like it just blew up. It blossomed with, with the sports fan, but just with people coming in here, too, feeling it. So going back to, you know, if there's a four-game series or a three-game series, I try to go to one game out of every series, if not all of them, because you know, when you experience it, it means much, much more. Sure, you can say, well, you're watching on TV. You got this camera angle. You got that camera sure. angle. But you know what? When you have those camera angles, you don't see the guy walking to the dugout, jumping over the third baseline. Right. Saying, you know, son of a gun. That's his and then some of the guys, as they do it, they grab the bill of their hat. That's the game you ask him and go, just paying homage to people that played the game before me, because this guy used to do that too. You don't see little things <clears throat> like guys coming in from right field always kicking second base. You know, things of that. And so that's what it's like when you experience Baird Brothers. And it's true. I mean, look at your credibility with, with, with this old house and that. It's like, come on, that is the ultimate, the penultimate peak of, of home building, of, of restoration of, of, of character and dignity, and you represent them. They, could have went, they came to you. And that's what I say, that's you know, not just nationally, but internationally craved right here in Canfield, Ohio. You, you know, and, that's, and that, uh, there, there's, there's so many truths in what you just said. And, and I, go, I go back and, and I still, I, 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 I still attach uh, 
a character to someone by, it's as simple as this, how they walk across our parking lot, if it's an employee or a prospective employee, because going back to that little sandlot dirt field, you were taught the same thing that I was taught. You run onto the field, you run off of the Baby, field. Baby, at every play you play like the game depends on it. Right? People say you can't right? do that. Oh, yes, you can. Yeah. Winning teams do that. That's right. And, and, and that, that sets your character. There's a mindset. You know that? Yeah. That we're here to win every day. Yeah. And as you approach your job and we at Baird Brothers approach our daily task, uh, yeah. If, if you think you're at the top of the game, the guy behind you, he's taking his shots at you. What so you better say? perform. Carpe diem, seize the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, right? So, you know, that, uh, in, in, you mentioned this old house. Uh, we've been fortunate over the past four, four and a half years to have a fantastic relationship with this old house. With nine shows with them? We just completed our ninth. Think about that. You know? Nine shows. And, and we feel the same with, uh, uh, partnering with Munch uh, Bishop in that the profiles match, oh, if wow. that makes sense. Thank you. Right? The profiles match. Well, our uh, goals are the same, to represent. Yeah. Do you know what? If you don't represent yourself, and I was taught this to an early age. My dad was a Marine. He was a factory worker, tool and die maker. His car didn't start at the time, so we always lived on a bus route. Would grab that old lunchbox, you know, with the curved top where the thermos set in. But the little things he taught me, you know, about respecting others, respecting people older than you, younger than you, smaller than you. I told you I was from the inner city. It's like, you're going to get in a fight? Nah. You got to pick the biggest guy in the crowd because you know, you'll get respect that way. Yeah, you're going to get the bejeebers beat out of you, but you know, you'll get respect that way. But it's just interesting. It's how you're brought up. But you know what else how I was brought up? At the end of the day. And what and I talk a lot to whether it be kids in grade school, junior high, high school. I, I talk to Fortune 500 companies and I go, think about this. At the end of the day, you're looking in the mirror, brushing your teeth, splashing water on your face. Who are you accounting to? The man upstairs and yourself. Yeah. And then once the day is over, just leave it behind, move on. Don't, don't dwell on it. But every day I want to say, you know what? Dang, I did good today. Or you know what? Well, should have picked that up just a little bit more. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. Yeah. And, and you account to yourself. If you're not held accountable by yourself, then bang, you've got problems. You, you, and, and listening to you with, with that, that little story, it makes me think of a story. Oh. Uh, and it was, uh, I think I saw it in a, in a cartoon form. And uh, a husband and wife, celebrating like 65 years of marriage and and they asked you know they asked the wife uh you know how how do you survive 65 years See, of marriage, i need to hear this right <laughs> and 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 tell my know, wife. so 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 she gave the you know the and i don't want to use the word generic but the obvious answer is oh right. we've we fell in love as as young kids and we've been in love ever since and and they turned to the to the husband. How? What do you account your longevity of marriage, and how you've been such a successful couple over the years? And he says, "I'll tell you this." He says, "You see that that big tree out in the front yard, right along the driveway there." Wow. He says, uh, "The fellow asking him says, yeah, I see it.'" He says, "Well, that tree wasn't always that big." He said, "It's kind of representative of." Our marriage it's grown he said but I, I learned early on he said it was just the tree was only four or five foot tall when we planted it he said every night when I came home he said I hung my work problems on that tree before I come into the house leave it there yep Wow right what See, great... even today I've just learned something new I love that yeah, yeah I, I just you know and it, and, and it does whether it's the business or whether, you know, <clears throat> when you go home, you and I both know we take stuff home with us every day. Yeah, you do. Right? But you put it in perspective. And, and that, I know that is your business approach. I know that is our business approach. <clears throat> 
Business is important, but family is at the top of the list. Oh, there's no doubt. There right? is no doubt. You know, family roots right up there. Right, right. So, uh, it, I appreciate that. I like it, learning something new every day. You know, it's it, it's not to oversimplify it, but it's easy. It how, is. How hard is it to hold a door open for someone Thank like you. you were taught? Thank you. Right? It's not hard at all. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's called kindness. Yeah. It's called respect. You know, you do a little something every day. It's pretty dang easy, isn't it? And people appreciate that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, getting getting back to... Getting Look at back this. To Lessons the, in life. I love this. Back to the Baird... Uh, Mr. Bishop well, can I call uh, this relationship. Baird University, like, it's not one-on-one. It's like, this is like the advanced course. This is like Baird <laughs> University, the 300 level of classes. Thank you. We're doing what we do every time we get together. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Share wisdom and learn a little bit of something new. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it's off the cuff. But uh, I, I know, and you, you've alluded to it, you love when you have your audience give you feedback. Say, hey, I, yeah, I was down at Baird Brothers the other day. He says, you know, you got to experience the place. Uh, saw a bear truck. Uh, I was down there picking lumber up. I'm doing a little project home. Getting a response, I'm sorry, getting a response is the highest tribute you can have. Is that that means people are listening to you and doing what, you know, hey, suggesting something to them. But something else, Steve, and I want to say this, I want to be, is, you know, we're having fun. And I want to be as serious as I've been doing this. Is that if I don't believe in something and I don't believe in the people and don't believe in the product and believe that they're the very best for the fans of the show because I'm their fans, then I cannot be an, you know, an endorser, an influencer, or talk about it. And so I just want you know, folks to know that, that it has to be as good as it gets because I'm not going to be a, a phony about that. I have never been a phony in 43 years. Now, sometimes I'll say things that people are like, ugh. But I won't say it unless I mean it. Yeah, and 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 so thank we you. well thank you, and we greatly appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> and and again, we go back to you meet a lot of people in this in this life, and and uh, I've experienced it over the years in in outside sales, and and I've met and made a lot of good friends. And, and there's, there's always something that personalities clash. And, oh, yeah, that's what, that's what makes people, you know? That? Right? And so you don't go at it in a straight line. You kind of go roundabout a little bit, oh. right? You're still going to get to your destination. <laughs> yeah, but you go about it a little bit different. Uh, but when personalities, uh, approaches align and are parallel, it's easy. And it's been easy between Munch and Baird Brothers. Uh, to your point, you appreciate what we do and we greatly appreciate how you go about your business. So it's a two-way street. Thank you, man. It's a two-way street. But it works together. It works, it works. We all, we all come together. Uh, it, 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 it's easy. It's just, it's just it's natural. <laughs> it's easy. What's it called? It's organic. You know what it's like? People, they're thinking, you know, the good people here uh, taping us and filming us there are going, boy, the guy is the loft kilter, isn't he? Not you, me. Yeah. But you know what that's like? I know you, I'm a dog guy, okay? And if you try to force a name on a dog, everybody out there, am I right? It doesn't work. You know, we just got, we, we lost our dog of uh, 11 and a half years ago, uh, early March. Month went by and the kids showed up one day. They go, we have a surprise. And, there's a, they knew we were miserable and brought us a new puppy. And by the way, sometimes puppies are more work than kids, okay? But they're like, okay, what do you want to name him, Dad? I go, I don't know. We can go, because if I have a name, it ended up being Roscoe, by the way, okay? Because <laughs> he's a rascal. I thought it went. But if you're like, okay, <sighs> that dog is going to be Charlie. Or it's be, nah. It's got to just come organically, you know what I mean? And so that's what happens with us, with the, with the thoughts that I'm talking about you. But you give me so many great ideas that it just flows. You know, think about it. I love it because you'll send me, I'll ask you, I'll ask Scott, give me some bullet points to hit because I want to know. But then also you'll give me one bullet point and I can go off for a half hour on it because I've experienced it and it's part of it because you know what? <clears throat> Nothing's more boring than 
reading from a piece of paper. Yeah. Reading yeah. from a piece of paper. And 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 you you are uh, our our approach to media in general, uh, radio, television, uh, cable, whatever the case may be, newspaper, print. It's a team effort, and it's it's uh, it's a chain, and you are a very strong link in that chain of our teammates, um, and and it's greatly appreciated. And I, I, I've got to tell you, I, I know you're aware of it. Uh, being here today, experiencing Studio 3B for the second or third time at different mm -hmm. stages. The completed Studio 3B. Completed Studio 3B and uh, some news as new as yesterday, the day before. Uh, we've rearranged our our BairdBrothers.com homepage. Ooh. And there's a new tile in there about a third of the way down the page, and it's a direct link to contentstudio.bairdbrothers.com. Love that content. That's com, good that right? you have that out there. That's right? so cool. So now when, when you're looking for your bullet points, you're gonna, you're, you yourself are going to go to Content Studio right off the main, the main website page, right? I off the home it. page, and bam. You're going to land in, and you're going to see all of the content that we've been creating, and it's just going to load your guns. I know you're going to have a blast with it. I can't wait. But just as importantly, our end consumer, the guy that we want to communicate to, mm -hmm. he wants to know something about Baird Brothers. You go to that page. There you go. And, and there's, you know. It sums it up. Build it with Baird's, American Hardwood Advisor, Studio 3B. Uh, the planning page, uh, a, a, another link to our relationship with uh, the good folks at, at uh, yeah, you know who I'm talking about. The, this old house. This old house, right? You, you could get lost just looking at all that stuff. And, and so the, the whole, I know, I know when we introduced this idea to you a uh, year and a half, two years ago about, well, we've got this little idea and these are the reasons we're doing it. We want, we, want to, we want to reach the people, mm -hmm. and we want to reach them for a couple of different reasons. We want to educate them on a lot of different subjects. We want to introduce them to a lot of good people, like yourself, and uh, there's going to be instruction. There, there's, we're going to talk different species of lumber. Uh, I've, I, I have another gentleman. Uh, we're going to talk antique tools. There's a wow. segment. There's a segment of our society, right? That it's all about the antique tools. Okay, I gotta. I gotta jump in on something real quick. Just <laughs> my personal. Uh, you see, you pique my interest every time we talk. You know, we've got all this great new technology, this and that. But I look at buildings that were built, and I like ha handiwork. I still go to a church in my old neighborhood. Well, those places were built, you know, hundred years ago. And we didn't have like micrometers, like you know, you hooked up to a computer to tell you this and that. I'll bet you you still get some of the top of the line, if not the very best, handcrafted products with the antique tools. Am I right? You know, you know, and yes, and it's it's a different approach. Right. But to 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 follow your story, okay. you just you just hit me with an idea. I I just had I had uh -oh. I had some of your your industry coworkers in yesterday. Okay. And. They, they were taking the nickel tour. And it, at the end of it, after I introduced uh, our CNC routing machine and the big blue donut, the, the, uh, back on our rip line, our optimizing line. Right. And they were, they were taken by the technology in, at our facility here. And I said, it's impressive. I said, but you know the two most important Assets as far as equipment that we have on this I property. Hear this. I said it's that guy there or that guy there. It's his eyes and his hands. Wait a second. Right? Do you know what? You're gonna love this. And again, I treasure the 21st century. And I especially me, modern medicine, okay? Right. <laughs> and things right. like that. However, I will never forget to me, analytics has a place in all sports. But it's overused, and I'll tell you how I got it. A, it doesn't judge character of a man, right? I'll never forget 
when the Browns first started using analytics in their drafts, and that's when the team went out of Sagali, seven and nine, three and thirteen, one and fifteen, zero oh and sixteen. All right, yep. relying mainly on that, and we all know the name Sam Bertigliano. I was with Coach Sam, and Sam has some great sayings. This is Bear Brothers about. I'm going to sweep up this floor, give me a brand new broom, you know, me with the clean bristles. But guess what? The old broom gets in the corners, right? The new broom doesn't get in the corners. So you want it done, so keep an old broom around. But what he told me, he goes, you know what, Munch? This guy's not going to make it. This guy's not going to make it. I go, how do you know that, Coach? He goes, what did he say he was going to do draft night? Going to go out and party with his buddies. No. <laughs> no, that's not a high, you know, that kind of, you should celebrate. And he said his analytics, and this is talking about that team member, that family member, that employee, that employee. He said, my analytics are up here, yeah. up here, and in here. Yeah. And that's exactly what you bring to the table. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> it's the same thing. Yeah. That's what makes you successful. Yeah. The human there's, element. There's, there is... Uh, and, and the, the Bairds will be the first one to make mention of it. Uh, coming through these last couple years with, with this uh, worldwide pandemic. Uh, it can't be easy. With all the other challenges uh, in day to day. You know, we shut down a couple years ago there. We, sh we shut down last week of March, first week of April. Shut it down so we could re regroup and rethink and when we came back after that second week, we had uh, right around 85, just over 85% of our employees come back voluntarily, you know? And uh, a few short months after that, we were back up to 97, 98%. Isn't that amazing? And, and uh, Bears will be the first one to tell you that story. And without the people behind the, the wall in the, in the showroom now, yeah. we're, we're, we're nothing. But think about this. This is what Baird stands for, is that how many places do you see everywhere they've got to curtail hours they or close certain days because people didn't come back. You had people come back yeah. because this was part of them, part of what they did because this was family. And that's what, once again, hence the success and the quality of the product. Yeah, we've, we've, been, we've been very, very fortunate as, as, a, as a work family uh, and and we've we've got nicked up a little bit, you know, throughout this whole thing. But uh, again, the the supports there, you know, I, I mentioned earlier. When you're down, there's going to be somebody there to help you up, and 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 yeah. it hold you know it holds true. And and uh, from from the guys in the very back building at this facility doing maintenance on our, our delivery trucks, maintenance on our tow motors, our forklifts, uh, you know, electrical issues, uh, whatever. From the maintenance crew to the guys that run the dry kilns to the guys back in the optimizing line, uh, the guys over in the sticker shed, you know, putting lumber on sticks. Love it. To, to, to the men on, on the, the, the mill room floor, uh, guys in our big warehouse. You've, you've walked that warehouse, you know. Keeping, keeping that in order, uh, to the sales staff, right to the ownership. Every person on that roster is important. So you know that, you treat them that way, and they realize that. And you know what, tell me the feeling they don't have when they leave in the evening. It makes them want to come back the next day and perform even better than the time before. You, you know, and, and you touched on it earlier, and I'm, I'm sitting here listening, thinking, and my mind's going a mile a minute like yours is. <laughs> and, and it goes back to something that you said, uh, the word pride. And we put together, uh, not including the last couple of years because of the situation we find ourselves in with the pandemic, but up, up to that point, we put together, a, a, for lack of a better word or better description, we put together a festival the last weekend in September. It's uh, called Red, White, and True. Love it. A celebration of American craftsmanship. Amen. So we have roughly, you know, 120 people on the facility, maybe more. Uh, 
So when Red, White, and True comes around, it's, it's, it's a task to, to organize it. It's a, it's a glorified open house. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we invite folks out, you know, and, and we, we greet them at the gate, assist them in parking, get them headed the right direction. So that particular Saturday, uh, our shop, all of our shops don't necessarily run on Saturday. Our showroom's open, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we make the announcement, okay, Red, White, and True is set for September, whatever, whatever, 29th, 27th, whatever the day is, <clears throat> that afternoon or that next day, I have guys from the shop coming up and approaching me, Steve, put me on the list. I want to work it. So those are the guys cooking the grill, cooking the dogs, cooking the burgers. Exactly. Wow. Giving the tours, standing by a piece of equipment, taking people through what they do day in and day out. And, and we, we, we coach them. You guys are ambassadors of Baird Brothers that day. We don't need to coach them. They volunteer to work wow. that day because they're proud of what they do. And they want to share. Exactly. And, you know, and don't neglect, too, and this is what Baird Brothers means, the food you collect, too, for the food bank. Yeah, our friends over at Second Harvest, uh, you know, that, that day is special. We mm -hmm. have, we have uh, you know, Second Harvest. We have uh, the, the Mahoney County Sheriff's Department out, you know, doing, doing God their... God bless them, by the way, heroes that are out there taking care of us every day. Every day, man. Whether, whether they're in a, a, a sheriff's uniform, state highway patrol uniform, a EMT's uniform, mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've had a tough couple of years. They've had a couple, you know. Very rough. And, and, and we're fortunate in this country to have them. Amen. Right? They're heroes every day. Every day. And uh, so, <clears throat> so, yeah. Take a little speech here about that. Go ahead. Is that I don't know if you knew this or not, and I was honored that I just finished up. I was um, nominated for, and you might have known, I just was well, a couple of months now, I just finished up the FBI Citizens Academy in Cleveland. And we had weekly classes for three months, three, three and a half hour classes. And the things that you learn that they teach you. Now, some of them make you laugh. There was just a little anecdote here. We're okay time-wise, right? Oh, we're, we're, we're great. Is that they talked about a sting operation or somebody with illegal cigarettes. And they said, these guys were just, they were criminals because they're making a million dollars a year, but they actually weren't bad guys. I go, what do you mean? <laughs> they go, we, there was a sting operation. A female agent and a male agent acted like they were a couple and they infiltrated. They said they never once felt in danger. But you ready for this? They got to like these guys so much, they even staged that they were going to get married. And on their way to the wedding, these two guys that were behind this multi-million dollar cigarette sting, you know, some fake cigarettes, the packages looked real, this and that, and everything, they were in the wedding. <laughs> and they were on their way to the wedding, quote unquote, there was really no wedding, yeah. in the limos when... Phew, the Suburbans came closed, pulling closed in, in on with them. the tinted windows. <laughs> and one of the guys even said, can't you at least let them get married before you take them away? And she goes, it's the only time I ever felt bad locking somebody up. You know, but, but now that's, that's on the funny side. But the chilling side is the little things you learn. And I don't want everybody to go over the speed limit to get, you know, to, to test this. But this is where you talked about the sheriff's department. In, in Mahoning County, in Trumbull County, in, in, in the area, in the local police department. And I've never knew this before, that every time they walk up, they pull you over, think about this, what's going through their mind is they always touch your left rear the quarter panel, tail light. Or tail light, yeah. Tail light. And why is that? This, 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 is gonna, this might even make bring tears to your eye. So their fingerprints are on there in case something happens, happens to them. And they tell you, they go, this is chilling. Whether you're a Canfield police officer or state highway patrol sheriff, is that every time you walk up to a car, and if I'm getting, this is heavy stuff, you don't know if it's gonna be your last time. Yeah. So they go, so sure, sometimes we have, we have an attitude coming up if you're not. And I don't mind sharing with you, on my way to one of the Michael Stanley tribute shows we lost in 2021, is that, yes, one of the fine officers from Oakwood had me go at 45 and a 35. And there's a new saying I want to share with you because it came with a friend <laughs> in the Highway Patrol. Remember, it used to be you could be fine 10 over? Yeah. Not anymore. Eight, you're fine, nine, you're mine. Okay, so remember that little rhyme. 
I'm not trying to cost any money for the conference and tickets. But when he came up, and I just so happened to have my Citizens Academy card with me, you know, that mm -hmm. I handed up with my license and an FOP card. He goes, you did it the right way. And I said, you know, I'm sorry. I'm a knucklehead for you pulling me over. But I realized what they're going through. So that's why I just had to toss it in there when you talk about them being here. They don't mm -hmm. know. They don't know if they're ever coming back to their family when they're pulling you over. So I'm, I'm sorry I got oh, no, that, no, I no. Want to, I want people to know that. No, and, 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 and it's, it's so very important. And, and you know, we find ourselves uh, in, in these United States and, and uh, we, we, we've got to mention all of our, all of our armed forces. Mm -hmm. I mean, same, same scenario. Yeah. They don't know if it might be their last day. You want to talk about pride? I have my, my godson who's at 35 Achieved the, cha the uh, achieved the rank of, of major in the U.S. Army, and at 41, going to be a lieutenant colonel. There you go. So congratulations. Going to head down to uh, Virginia for the ceremony yep. here in a couple of weeks. We've been uh, having a fantastic day talking with Mark Munch Bishop today. Uh, Munch, thanks for coming in, and man. No, you you're welcome, and thank you for having me to be in Studio 3B at the Great Bear Brothers Fine Hardwoods. This is it, baby. This is living. That's all I can say. We, we covered some ground today, uh, you know, in one of, one of our segments, uh, in fact, it might be the intro, we talked about life's lessons. Yes, we did. Okay. They're important. I want to invite you back, and we're going to sit down, and we're going to do this again, and we're going to talk about the influence radio advertising has and how important our partnerships are. All right, great. And, and how, it, how it serves our consumers. Let's do it. Okay? Until then, buddy. Brother. Appreciate Always it. Always a pleasure, Thank my you. friend. Stay tuned, folks. Thank you. Content Studio, BairdBrothers.com. Uh, keep following us on all the social platforms. A lot of good stuff coming at you soon. For all you folks listening, thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time.